Kevin Henry, the editor of Dental Assisting Digest here today in Honolulu at the ADA annual session with my good friend and a frequent dad contributor, Teresa Duncan. And Teresa's going to tell you guys today the two most common coding mistakes. Yes. Is that right? Yes. All right, take it away. Well, the two things that I hear most often from audience members is I keep getting requests for the same information. And so I say to them, let's check the claim form initially. Is it going out? If it's a crown, is it going out being listed as a replacement crown? Because you're automatically going to get requests for information. So pay attention to what you're sending out. Make sure all the optional boxes are checked. Uh, if you are sending out a, a claim for a crown, you know that you're most probably going to need an attachment. So it, it's those things that when they come back and ask for more information, it lengthens the revenue cycle. So make sure you're sending out all that information ahead of time. Now, the second thing that I get is that they're getting, they're asking for more information back from the office because data fields are missing. So it, it, it really starts from the beginning when the patient is checked in. Make sure that you fill in that date of birth. Make sure that you fill in that Social Security number. Now, I, m many of the larger insurance companies are moving away from Social Security numbers and using uh, identifiers. Aetna's start with a W. Um, Cigna's sometimes start with a, a U. And if those aren't on the claim form, they may not process your claim because now they're, they're moving away from Social Security numbers. So instead of just using what you have on file, make sure that you get a copy of their active card and use that information when you send it in. It's amazing that, that little things like that can really delay payment by 45 days. And for a small office, that you know that's that's a pretty impactful amount of time on your on your revenue cycle. So it's just, I think those are easy to avoid, but let's get the word out there and have them do that. <laughs> and I know honestly, a lot of times I'll get from readers of Dental Assisting Digest, they they want more information. So I'll usually either give them like three some blog site or I'll give them some other information. But if you're in the Boston area or going to the Yankee Dental Congress. Uh, this coming January in Boston, Teresa's going to be speaking there. Tell them a little bit about what you're going to be talking about there. Well, on Friday, the morning session will be uh, basic insurance coding, and it's, it's appropriate for a beginner and intermediate users of dental insurance, or I guess billers of dental insurance. And then the afternoon session is going to be a little bit more advanced. It will be on implant coding and on periodontal coding. And as you and I have talked many times about implant coding, I mean, I can never seem to get enough information out there. There's always, it's changed, ever changing. So, and then on Saturday, I invite the doctors to join me for a fraud and embezzlement course uh, Saturday morning. So, and, and you'll be there, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'll be speaking there as well. I'm going green. So, uh, if you're interested in green or coding, uh, <laughs> yeah, or green coding for that there matter, you go. Uh, Feel free to come to Boston. Uh, Teresa and I will be there, and uh, I'll be sure to be in her course learning a little more uh, about some tips and tricks for coding. So, appreciate Thank the time. Thank you so much. Thanks.